We are the anchors of Queer News tonight, and this evening we discuss the queer headlines. Conservative politicians claim President Biden replaced Easter with Transgender Day of Visibility. Trump, Republican leaders, and right-wing media fuel the controversy. E's House of Villains Season 2 returns with a star-studded cast and LGBTQ plus representation. A very famous drag queen may be at the top of the villain mountain. Half of the U.S. states are set to ban gender-affirming care. As a result, nearly a quarter of all trans adults are facing health care disruption, and nearly 40% are considering moving. Wilton Manors welcomes the West End Lounge, a new LGBTQ hotspot offering innovative cocktails and a vibrant atmosphere, and its grand opening on April 6. GOP organizer Matt Schlapp allegedly paid $480,000 to Carlton Huffman, dropping a gay sexual assault lawsuit. Join the 41st Outshine LGBTQ Plus Film Festival, Miami's edition, on April 18th for the opening night. The festival begins with Turtles at Silver Spot Cinema. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only LGBTQ Plus daily evening television news broadcasting live and then available on demand. Available on all smart televisions, including Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. It's time to queer up the news for Monday, April 1st, 2024. We are live and literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we're gonna tell this evening on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only unedited live LGBTQ plus evening news show. Whatever happens unique in the LGBTQ news, you will see it and hear it. Hotspots Magazine Happening Out Television Network is a nonprofit 501c3 media company in the same model of PBS and NPR, but designed for the LGBTQ plus community. Our mission is to support the 11 pillars of our LGBTQ plus community. We want to inform and educate the key issues of our queer culture, the black community, Latino, lesbians and queer women, trans students, youth, seniors, HIV AIDS healthcare, business, social justice and faith. Help us support our community. We are part of one of the largest LGBTQ plus nonprofit media companies in America, Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out Television Network. In 2024, our magazine is celebrating 40 years of the LGBTQ plus experience and our television, news, talk and entertainment shows support our mission to educate the LGBTQ plus and broader community. So let's meet tonight's anchors at Queer News Tonight. Let's begin by welcoming anchor Carvel Estriplet. Yay, yay. Founder of Carvel Bikes, the only trans owned business in Wilton Manor. She is an unapologetic, proud black trans woman and trans community activist. She's also active in the Florida Democratic LGBTQ plus caucus. Hello, Ms. Carvel. Hey, hey Faye. Thank you. Thank you for that intro. Thank you. Uh, this is great to be here on here on the show. Um, we love having you. Yeah. How is the bike shop? I hear that you changed your hours recently. No, my hours is still the same. Monday through um, Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6. Um, I have a full service bike shop. I offer rentals. So any of uh, our towners, Airbnb owners, rental properties, I got tons of rental bikes. And I also have brand new bikes as well. And if you already have a bike, I'm a full service shop too as well. I love that. Make sure you take your bike on over to Carvel's Bikes, all right? Next up, let's welcome anchor Dr. Ty Hauser. He's a professor of English and Humanities at Broward College and teaches in the College of Business at Florida Atlantic University. He has served as a visiting professor at colleges in Bolivia, Brazil, China, India, and Spain, and provides an international viewpoint. Ty, you have been talking about the new bar, The Well, on Wilton Drive. They're doing a new show called The Well Sung a Variety Show. I love that. Starring the one and only Miss Bouvier on April 4th. Tell me what's happening. <laughs> this is great. So uh, my friend Eric, a.k.a. Miss Bouvier, is, is bringing something somewhat new to the drive. Uh, she talks about it as continuing uh, a, a, a venture that had happened previously, but it's a variety show. Uh, and it's gonna run on Thursday evenings. Uh, 6.30, I believe, is the show time. It's about a 90 minute show. 
Uh, this week, she's opening with Susie Toots. If you don't know Susie, she does her little tap dancing. And she also has Faye, I know you love the well strung violinist. Yes! <laughs> yes. So, Marcos, uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Acox, I adore him, the tattered violinist. Oh, yeah. tattered oh, violinist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So we, uh, so that's that's how that's how we're opening this week. But it, it's it's sure to be a good time and something new on a Thursday night. So Miss Bouvier like, has the most talented friends like in life. I seriously, yes. okay, yes. like there's yes. that. If anybody can fill up that hour and a half with incredible talent, it's Miss Bouvier. Yeah. So definitely gonna go look out for that. <laughs> Next up, let's welcome anchor Jonathan Casagna. Hey. I'm proud of him. <laughs> I'm so aggressive. Are... <laughs> <He's> so aggressive. <laughs> no one makes me laugh at God. He's horrible. Like he's just a horrible, horrible human. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. He's a board member of Forward Miami. He's also one of the producers of Gay Ultra Festival, the largest Latin diversity and inclusion festival in the nation. John, you're going to be one of the hosts at Bear Jamboree at OMW and Orlando Bear Pride Weekend, unless I steal your gigs, at Crown Plaza, May 31st through June 2nd. Tell me what's happening. Well, yeah, thank God you're not a bear because you would take this gig from me, too. <laughs> um, she is a bear. What do you My know? My goodness. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm going to be performing, actually. I'm going to be hosting as well but i think like what i'm most excited about is i'm going to be performing my music and some covers during some of the pool parties at the crown plaza so yeah it's going to be fun we have some some couple months to prepare because you know i definitely need to get some new music out there but they love what we did in the last uh lauderdale bear week so we want to continue doing that and hopefully we can get some a lot of people there it, last year was pretty good at about 150 people but we're trying to get 500 people to the pool party wow. this year so please follow me please follow um you know one magic weekend let's get uh, all the bears out there and you Faye, but don't take my job i will not take your gig but you know where i stay for one magical weekend every year right they have, better not be the Sheridan or the Crown Plaza. It's the Bear Hotel. Oh my That's God! Right. <laughs> Your feet right. is creeping yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. She's got, got a got foot it. in the. They ask me what hotel, hotel I want to be at. That's the hotel <laughs> I want to be at. They have the best pool parties. All right. They do. They Next do. Next up, let's welcome Mark Pettit. Mark is a pioneering traveler and coordinated the very first gay pride parade ever on the continent of Antarctica. He's also a former Mr. Sawmill Leather Sir. He and his husband, who's gorgeous, Luke, run linksbyluke.com, <laughs> the chainmail harness and pride accessory shop. Mark, a wonderful cultural event is coming up called Art Walk that includes yep. both the growing Dixie Village Art District, that's incredible, and the famous Wilton Drive on April 15th. Tell me what's happening. It is, I think, one of the most exciting things about Art Walk is to see it grow and to see it sprawl out. And when you go there, you really get what these artisans, including Links by Luke, actually make by hand. So it's not going through retail or another store. Yeah. So now that Art Walk is so big, I should, I do want to point out to everybody, we will be right outside like apartment 9F, which is right on mm -hmm. the drive in Wilton. So come by and see us. If you're fast, this little gorgeous beauty might still be there, but That's if amazing. not, <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite one, honestly. I love that oh my one. God, that would look, they, so they would need to like put like three of those together to fit your arm. To, to fit mine? Well, yes. they can customize it for you. No, that's yes, right. They can. Everything is custom fitted <laughs> links by Luke, and we will not let Jonathan buy this until you get there. Yes. <laughs> yes. You and only uh, you. All right, fine. But of course, this is tonight's lead anchor, Faye Watt. She's a legendary event host, a bear host as well, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> She's a television and radio personality and the host of Faye Watt Show on Mondays. And and uh, Faye, Pride for Lauderdale is bringing Unicorn Dragon Bingo to Pride Center of Equality Park. And it's starting my friend T.P. Lords on April 11th. What's happening there? Yes, so T.P. Lords and London Adore take over bingo at the Pride Center April 11th starting at 5.30, okay? So my bingo gays, you know who you are, or my closeted bingo gays, you know who you are. <laughs> this is for you. Over three hours of bingo with amazing baskets full of merch and booze and a lot more. I won a $300 pasta maker last what? month, okay? okay. I did. There's food, bingo, and performances by legendary star T.P. Lords and London Adore, all for like 20 bucks, okay? It starts oh. at 5.30, but you could drop in anytime after to play bingo. Unicorn Bingo at the Pride Center, April 11th, and it benefits Pride Fort Lauderdale. See you then. So, folks, we are the reporters for Queer News Tonight, and this evening we begin with the queer headlines. The LGBTQ plus community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast. And here are the bullet points of the queer news for today, Monday, April 1st, 2024. Happy April Fool's Day. I'm going to turn off the TV right now. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right, first things first, let's begin by queering up politics. Clash of the Titans and weird smackdown, Biden transgender day of visibility versus Trump Easter on the same day. 
Accusations are flying, claiming President Joe Biden aimed to replace Easter with Transgender Day of Visibility. The coincidence of this day falling on Easter Sunday on March 31st stirred controversy with Republican leaders and right-wing media propagating misleading narratives against the Biden administration. White House spokespersons dismissed the allegations, calling them unsurprising coming from certain politicians. President Biden, as in previous years, issued a proclamation recognizing Transgender Day of Visibility. Despite routine observance, this year's convergence with Easter intensified backlash. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson condemned the administration's stance on Twitter. He said, quote, the Biden White House has betrayed the central tenet of Easter, which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ banning sacred truth and tradition, while at the same time proclaiming Easter Sunday as Transgender Day, is outrageous and abhorrent. The American people are taking note, end quote. Oklahoma Governor Kevin, Kevin Stitt and Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves, both Republicans expressed similar views. Caroline Leavitt, former President Donald Trump's national press secretary, criticized Biden's proclamation on Truth Social, calling it appalling and insulting. Even Caitlyn Jenner weighed in, saying Biden was wrong to support trans people over Christian values. Human rights campaign president Kelly, and Kelly Robinson dismissed the false outrage, thanking President Biden for recognizing Trans Day of Visibility and educating critics on the annual observances date. GLAD president and CEO Sarah Kay Ellis addressed the manufactured controversy, highlighting the significance of Transgender Day of Visibility and affirming support for transgender visibility. I freaking can't believe this shit. Yeah, like, it's, it's, so, it's, so, yeah. it's so crazy to even like read this whole thing. I can't wait to find out what Carvel thinks about this. But I mean, it's just completely ridiculous, I folks. Mean, Transgender Day of Visibility, right, was started in 2010 and it was set to March 31st. That is the date that it happens every year. Easter is on like on the, what is it, John? Last the, the, the last Sunday. It changes of, every don't year. ask me. It I don't know. Okay, no, it, it, changes it, 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 it changes every, every year, year because yeah. it's just yeah. the last Sunday, right? Yeah. So the number date changes. <laughs> Biden didn't make it Trans Day of Visibility to take over Easter. That was never the intention. Biden has always, not always, until, you know, recently started really supporting the trans community, right? And he put he had even posted on um, on uh, Instagram, you know, trans uh, trans rights are human rights. Right. And he does that. He's been doing a little more of that, you know, as we see him in his presidency. But it wasn't taking away from what Easter meant to folks who follow Easter, to religious folks. It, it does. It wasn't coinciding. It wasn't to take the place of. And so, of course, these right wing people are going to make this this controversy and just start putting out this false narrative. So people believe it, you know, like, oh, my God, the, the you know, President Biden is picking is picking trans people over Easter. I mean, that couldn't be more ridiculous. Spin and I simply bad spin it, spin it differently, though. All yeah. press no, is good so press. Right. Even yeah. bad press is good press. So Trans Day of Visibility, hello, everyone knows it's that happening now, right? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. So, I mean, it, even that's within true. the story, they said it was a. It's it. This thing is completely manufactured. They're looking for we're the boogeyman now. Mm -hmm. Trans people were to wear we're the new. Oh, we we keep lock you kids away from us and things like that. So I'm not totally surprised on the manufactured outrage of this. Yeah, speaking of outrage. manufactured outrage, I'm sorry, is uh, Trump holding a Bible and then oh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, God. of a sacrilegious, like, yeah. shut up. And yeah. then Caitlyn Jenner needs to go away. I don't yes, know the last please. time she supported a trans person, not even herself. She hates herself and she hates the community. And I think she yeah. needs to have the microphone ripped away from her face. I agree. She has none to say. She does not represent me at all. No, exactly. she yeah. doesn't. Yeah, she really so, doesn't. No. What and, do you but, think? Uh, well, March 31st was also National Crayon Day, National Prom Day. <laughs> it was my best friend's birthday. National, Every year it's her birthday on that day. National Slams on the Half Shell Day, <laughs> National Bunsen Burner Day, <laughs> National Tater Day. So there's a lot of people there who are going to be complaining day. about Easter <laughs> being degraded. Y'all better look out for that call from Crayola. Well, and coming. a surprise, oh. surprise, surprise. It's actually a pagan holiday. <gasps> oh. oh. But see, it's nobody does that history, right, to yeah. find yeah. out about that. Surprise, it's just ridiculous. Surprise. But we're all making fun of it, but you know that there are some people watching this and reading this and going, well, I was on the fence, but no, I'll never go against religion, so I'm going to go and vote for Trump. Well, the people who are left, like this. the people who are left are in a cult. There's nothing you convince them. I mean, that's just, that's what it is. I mean, they drank the Kool-Aid they, they the Kool and, and Trump is charging for it. There's no. So, <laughs> when you get a, when he's going to he's gonna give it for free. Come when on. You get now. a Bible with like purchase cards. Yeah, yeah, you have to buy everything. Uh, uh, all the merch. <laughs> nothing is free from this. Don't drifter. forget the shoes. Like, oh, yeah, the if shoes, I wanted yeah. a Bible, I'd go steal it from a motel like everybody else. Like, I don't want to do that. They give it for free in a motel. Why am I going to buy it from you, bro?
Yeah. That's why you're they're in a cult, then. This is another latest merch. <laughs> yeah, good, <laughs> way, to, good way to put right it. Here. You're right. You're right. <laughs> All right, let's move this train down the tracks then. Next, we're going to clear up <laughs> entertainment. Here are the worst of the worst of reality evil on House of Villains Season 2. Get ready for the highly anticipated return of E's House of Villains as Season 2 promises another round of drama, feuds, and unforgettable moments. With a star-studded cast featuring reality TV icons, LGBTQ plus representation takes center stage with contestants like Candy Muse, Richard Hatch, and Tiffany Pollard. Alongside them are legendary reality TV women who have captivated audiences for years, from jaw-dropping confrontations to unexpected alliances this season guarantees to keep viewers on the edge of their seats. With the cast of House of Villains Season 2 locked in, fans can expect nothing short of entertainment gold. So buckle up and brace yourselves because the drama is about to unfold like never before. Here's the list of cast members to expect this season. Prepare for an epic showdown as Survivor's original winner and reality TV pioneer Richard Hatch returns for House of Villains Season 2. Joining him is the always outspoken RuPaul star Candy Muse, ensuring no shortage of drama. Back by popular demand, the iconic Tiffany Pollard is ready to shake things up once again, and Jesse Goddards, a veteran of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, adds to the star-studded lineup. Bad Girls Club alum Camila Poindexter points her signature flair to the mix, while Safari, known for his high-profile relationship with Nicki Minaj, promises to stir the pot. Rounding out the cast are Larissa Lima, Wes Bergman, and Victoria Larson from The Bachelor. Don't miss the premiere on E! later this year. Oh, hi! Welcome to E!'s House of Villains Season 2 Auditions. Please introduce yourself and tell me why I should care. Hi, I'm Teresa Judice, and I'm from the Real Housewives in New Jersey. Prostitution whore. Engaged. Oh, wait. Jesse Goddard's big brother. You know what you did. You know what you did! Okay. I'm Safari, loving hip-hop. I'm just trying to eat my food and watch the show. I said that? Uh-huh. I'm Victoria from The Bachelor. Look at me, why would you not put me in a house with the jacuzzi? Trust me, if the cast wasn't already leaked, there's no way you would have made it into this house. <laughs> I'm Candy Muse, RuPaul's Drag Race. Girl, really? Camila Poindexter, Bad Girls Club. You gotta go, bitch. Oh, okay. My name is Wes Bergman. I'm one of the greatest challengers of all time. I didn't do it, you did it, dummy. Such acting. Are you classically trained? Richard Hatch, Survivor. Oh. So my favorite part of this is um, Joel McHale's quote. He says, uh, 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 "This is your fault, America." Oh my God, that's a comedian guy. That's yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Right. And Tiffany right. Pollard, New York, is still on the air. She yeah. was originally from uh, Oh Flavor, Flavor of yeah. Love. Oh, 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 and then she yeah. got her own reality show. But yeah. here's the thing: like Ty read by popular demand. Who the hell was her on this show? Again? Because I mean, she was on season was one. Here. She Who? was on season Tiffany one. Mean? Tiffany, New York, yeah. was on season one because I saw it because. Al I, yeah, Ferguson but, told me to watch it. It was a stupid ass show. And all yeah, right? but she left it's too home. early. But she, she wasn't left even, too she early. She left early, so they brought her back. There's because about she, a million other people you could have brought instead of her. Well, because she's like the best. She don't even get her cities anymore. Like she's, she's no like more. ever since the Gemma Colin, where she called her fat. See you and next Tuesday. Ooh. That's why they bring her back because she continues to go viral with the same verbiage that's that she true, did though. that once. That's but true. I have to know. That's true. And like she has the best comeback. She will call people like. A cockroach cum sucker or some yes. shit. And you'll be like, what the hell? Like, just <laughs> ah, things that don't go together, right? And if you're watching it on cable, they don't bleep it out, right? So it's like, whoa, <laughs> like, where does she come up with this? And the you thing know? is, so the show's and premise really like, is to like outsmart and out scheme each other in mm -hmm. some of these like challenges. And so I don't know that she does well there, but when she's up for elimination is when <laughs> everything's shot. <laughs> like, like, you're supposed to like stay, like, why you should stay in the house. And yeah. she's literally just berating the person. Yeah. Like, you put me here, F you, mom. Yeah. It's like, they're not going to keep you after you say that yeah because you're supposed to please that line should be like, survivor island wash-ups <laughs> <laughs> sorry this is true activities. no but they're the best ones survivor and the bachelor contestants <laughs> are all the, the best wash and that show traitors <laughs> yes they're those are the ones that do the best i don't know well, why who was that guy with the crazy blonde hair johnny something he yes. was on season yeah, one yeah, yeah, he yeah. was from survivor yeah and he was known as the bad guy from survivor 20 years ago oh, yeah. and he's still living off that i'm like what am i doing wrong and he's still yeah. evil <laughs> he's not oh evil. my gosh you're not me and a little 
that I saw <laughs> Teresa Jagais on the on the poster. Yeah. Yes. We didn't mention her name, but she's known through like everywhere for Desperate Housewives. Uh, Desperate Housewives. No, Real house, Housewives uh, of, of of New Jersey, and she's the first one to like flip tables. That is yeah. what has gone viral. She from will her. be going home. Episode one. You think so? Oh yeah, she sucks at games. <laughs> and worse, she's not she's the smart one. <laughs> she's good at fighting. She's like a she's a not not as good as Tiffany Pollard, no. but she's definitely conniving. But she's not smart enough to uh, do a challenge. I want your inside knowledge. How do you think Candy Muse is gonna? Be? Yeah, and is she gonna be like in drag the whole time? You know? <laughs> Didn't you just see her? Yeah, I saw her in uh, at Hunter's last night or the night before. <laughs> <laughs> Only this yeah. show America can say yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, we just saw her at <laughs> Hunter's. Saw her, yeah. <laughs> I think she's gonna do great, honestly. Oh, oh I mean, yeah, she's conniving. Yeah, 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 and she's and like loud, way. and so I think, and, but she's also fun and charming. So I yeah. think she's gonna get along with her when people are not gonna want to vote her out. Mm -hmm. But I will say, in some of these other, and not to bring down the room, in some of these reality shows, usually the queer folk get voted out first. Like people don't know how to handle them. Who but was I the think... gay boy in season one? He was there for a while. The one from 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 the Zeus Network, the the black guy that that did the kind of like a bachelor version, uh -huh. but like a really really funny edgy one. Mm -hmm. um, but it was because he kept his mouth quiet in his show. He is a loud mouth, really inappropriate person. But on the show last season, he got along with everyone. That's mm -hmm. the trick. And I think Kenny Muse is going to take that route. I think she's going to be you nice. Think she's going to try to be nice to everybody to start. I yeah. love watching Jonathan fangirl. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ty wants to watch you watch, watch it. it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay, I'm you just right. joining you. We <laughs> All right, Carvel. What's next, Mama? All right. Let's let's queer up trans rights. Trans eight results are in. Twenty four percent of all trans people have lost gender affirming health care. Republican lawmakers nationwide have targeted trans individuals. Uh, accessing gender affirming health care. Now, half of all the U.S. states plan to ban such care for trans youth, impacting adults at two. Several states, including Florida, have restricted access to gender affirming care for adults. Last year, Florida enacted a law mani mandating in person uh, physician treatment, limited nurse practitioners, and telehealth, too, options. A data from the progress um, study now reveals that results of these oppressive actions, nearly one in four transgender adults faced disrupted access to gender affirming care in the past year. Additional, one in five avoid medical care due to care totally due to concerns about discrimination. According to the data, 38% of trans adults have contemplated to relocating and moving due to anti-LGBT laws aligning with the findings from the U.S. Transgender Survey, which reports 47% uh, percent consider leaving their state's results also indicate far worse for the T of LGBTQ+, as 65% of transgender adults perceive the decline of LGBT quality of life in the past year. That is compared to 34% to cisgender, gay, and bisexual adults. Mental health has adversely affected 79% for, for transgender adults compared to 50% cisgender and bisexual adults due to these anti-LGBT policies. Additionally, 67% of transgender adults and 40% cisgender, gay, and bisexual adults report encountering anti-LGBT remarks from acquaintances in the past year. These trends highlights the pervasive impact of discriminatory legislations on both transgender and cisgender LGBTQ plus individuals. This has directly impacted me. Um, I have, in the last six months, have been off and on for my medication because I can't access it anymore. And then right now, when I do sign it, I go to my doctor and I have to sign a document saying that I am crazy, I don't know what I'm doing to my body, and this is the experimental um, medicine, and you're basically saying you're subhuman, you don't know what I'm doing. And this is happening right now. And this is a step to authoritarianism. This is this blatantly saying, oh, you can't take this medicine because we don't like it. And it's fr frightening. It's very frightening. And personally, personally, in the last year or two, 
we we have these we have this governor going after us in every shape or form mm -hmm. and too and unfortunately i have friends have moved away from the state too because of combination of not only the laws too but also the hate that we we i have encountered my friends have encountered too and i don't want to say it's only limited to oh cisgender straight people things like that i also have encountered um hate within our community too mm -hmm. yeah. and there is a bias against trans people in this community and it has to be addressed and i firsthand encountered that i'm not going to go into the detail of the story too but there is a need of more unity in this community yeah as much we like we cat around having fun things that there is individuals and people that are not in our best interest and unfortunately they're they're LGBT too, too, too. Yeah. Plus, yeah, yeah, they're also part of our community too, but they don't see them. But going back to this, these laws, I mean, it's, 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 we, we, I'm not going to move. I'm not going anywhere. And I told my friends, I'm not going anywhere because somebody has to stay here mm -hmm. and run against these politicians. I have political ambitions. This is not conjecture and talk to people know me when I'm a part of the caucus too. I, like I said, right now I'm still just focusing on my business, but the thing is, the best way to get rid of these hateful actions and individuals in power is to replace them. And the people who want to stand up will need to stand up. Yeah. And I'm one of those individuals, I'm putting it out there too, things that, that thing is going to come soon. And to get rid of these, this, this is, this is straight up hate. These are not, there's no purpose of these laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No yeah. And, yeah, it's uh, that's my two cents. But what, right, a, right, but what a smart way yeah. to to scare people by making you sign a document that says it's experimental drugs and that you're crazy. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's it's and I think we that's where I think that's where we fail. I mean, one I I say it's our parents' fault, right? I think I think coming from a Cuban household where I know my parents were ignorant and taught me wrong things and my cousin becoming a therapist to um, a Trans youth and explaining to me that the, it starts with the parents if your parents can cope and know how to deal with you and know how to fight against this and move you to a state Yeah, that you're effed <clears throat> right. You're effed as a kid. And so I, I hate to say I blame my parents or the parents, but I, I think that's where it starts, man. I wish they would have taught us different and had an open heart. Mm -hmm. um, and then furthermore, in, in regards to what the document you had to sign, that was the way that they outsmarted us. Yeah. We need to now outsmart them and fight against these kind of dumb, dumb, dumb tactics that they're using. But it's getting us. worse, the problem, on, but it's getting worse. The problem worse. is that we've got legislatures making yeah. these laws and they're not professionals. They don't know what's going on. Yeah. Because just this year, right, the American Psychological Association came out with a statement in support of trans people and trans youth. The American Association of Pediatrics came out and reaffirmed their commitment yep. to uh, trans. That gender youth. affirming care, okay, yeah. will cut the possibility of a kid wanting to commit suicide or end their life or anything right. like that. It's proven right. science. It's yeah, proven and so these are the experts yeah. saying this, and we've got legislatures going, oh, no. Right. Don't okay. listen to him. He's only got 15 degrees. Listen to this guy. Carvel. I am just so eternally grateful that you are here to even talk on this. There's been so many times on other newscasts and on other shows when these issues come up and we really just, we do our best yeah. to yeah. go through them, but we can't share the experience Ever. like what you just Ever. shared. Completely, completely. Uh, I'm so glad that you're here and willing to like, because I don't know if I would talk about my doctor's visits mm. on the air and it, it means a lot. Carvel Car 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 for president, kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. Those are aspirations. Keep coming Those are back. Yeah. Those are serious aspirations. But, but thank you, Mark. I mean, it's it, it it it's it's just so frightening. And remember, it's a slippery slope. These people hate all of us. Yeah. They hate they hate everybody. Mm -hmm. So they're already starting with the the weakest part of the community. That's our my community. So next, what they're gonna say? You need a document to get married. Not my my marriage. Say, oh, you need a. They're already proposing in other states. Like in Texas, if you want to get gender, gender affirming care, oh, you can't have your guns rights. You can't have you. Oh, you can't have this rights. Or you can't buy property. Or just. Or you can't. They're just. What's stopping to go? They're like associating yeah. it with yeah. insanity or yeah. They're just saying so everything is insane. So if it's not white and right, it's gonna be queer and, cr and crazy. Yeah. Or if it's not like a, so. That's the thing people have to see. You have to open it because you're doing it to me already. But they're yeah. coming. But, but they're coming for us right they're, after. They're coming for everyone. For sure. And that's the thing people have to realize. It's they're they push. Like we said, you have a candidate 
there are orange orangutan I call him. I don't recall by his real name. The, the <laughs> that Dr. Guy. Trump. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> he says day one, I want to be a dictator. And the other guy say the, the, the you got our our guy here, our governor says, okay, well I can be a dictator. And he is being in a small way. And and that's why th- this, these are really scary times. Yeah. yeah. They really yeah. are. So. Yeah. And you know, again, to just reaffirm what Mark said, it's great that you are on the panel and able to talk yeah. about it because nobody else can speak of your experience yeah. or the lived experience of a trans individual. We can't and we'll never know. You know, we're, I'm very well aware that I'm a light skinned lesbian woman that can pass. Mm. Right. If I don't tell you that I love what you wouldn't know. Jeez. <laughs> you just say like, I'm like you just wrong. you just straight up. That was time of fate. Well, now but, I know. know, what I mean? girl. So, yeah, you know, so right. it really breaks my heart that you know, close to seventy yeah. percent of people, seventy percent of trans people, you know, hear this horrible anti-LGBTQ plus stuff from their own acquaintances. Right. Yeah. You know, from their own friends, from other letters in our community. That's yeah. what Carvel said. Yeah. Like that is so that's effing crazy. No, that's that happened. I believe I believe you. So, yeah. Yeah. Caitlin. All right. Next, let's queer up South Florida and Florida. Wilton Manor's The West End Lounge grand opening April 6th. Wilton Manor's welcomes a new LGBTQ plus hotspot at the intersection of Wilton Drive and Northeast 21st Court, formerly the Maddie's location at the Gables. Uh, the long-awaited West End Lounge grand opening is April 6th, nestled beside Tulio's Tacos and Tequila Bar. It promises a refreshing luxury cocktail experience. Spearheaded by the director and mixologist Nick Trainer, the lounge aims to redefine mixology with a focus on natural ingredients and contemporary techniques. Meow. Patrons can anticipate a diverse menu boasting classics alongside innovative concoctions like the West End Spritz, brown buttered old fashioned, and the strawberry social. <laughs> Despite initial delays, owner Chris O'Neill remains optimistic, stating their vision for the West End Lounge remains unwavering. They aim to create a space where patrons can savor signature cocktails, delectable bites, and occasional live music amidst a stunning ambiance. With positive feedback on the initial renderings, anticipation for the lounge's grand opening is welcomed as it represents the robust business and entertainment community growing on Wilton Drive and in Wilton Manors. The West End Lounge is part of the anchor of businesses of one of America's largest concentrations of gay bars, lounges, restaurants, galleries, shopping, and professional services aimed at the LGBTQ plus community. The new West End Lounge is set to open April 6th. Stay up to date on all of their news (laughs) at the West End Lounge, WM.com. Um, right this, by your house? Right by your house? Yeah, I could, like, my house. I could spit at the building. I'm so close. <laughs> Here, you need to. Uh, no, this is great. Listen, the more I, I say yeah. the more the merrier. I say, you know, see, that, that location is a little tough. There are some other uh, 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 venues that aren't doing so well. So I'm hoping that, you know, we can get the ball rolling for them, um, you know, in a positive way, given that it seems to be the, the you know, the leases are so high mm, that yeah. everyone's starting to leave and the only people that come in can only last for a short while or are making buku dollars and yeah. It's, yeah. it's happening everywhere but it's sad that it's happening on wilton drive specifically because we need these spaces for yeah. us yes. so hopefully you know hopefully it does well uh it seems like it's going to be kind of more of an upscale you know you know super mixology okay. kind of lounge i think they place. have more yeah. one, they have more than one location too oh do yeah. they yeah oh. okay well so, then yeah, that, that always helps oh, good. right yes. yeah and yeah. so they're like you know like hunters but I think they, I heard they have more than one location. Oh, nice. And um, it's funny that the, you bring up that story la, la, last night. Oh, that, no, not last night, but la, yesterday afternoon, I was at Ethos, and one of the, the bartender over there it was his last day. Levi, shout out to you. He's going to move to work to you at the West End. Like, oh, nice. He's telling me he's going to be a mixologist. Well, that's probably. Well, that's great. Oh, yeah. Well, the drinks sound, the <laughs> drinks sound spectacular. spectacular. Yeah, I sounds, like the yeah. loungy yeah. feel yeah. that the that the sketches yeah. are showing. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're saying that they're going to be doing like a lot of cabaret and stuff like that. So, you know, I love me some live music, you know. It, Maybe you could sing some cabaret. Maybe there. I could. You know what's crazy about that now that you say that? There's mm-hmm. a lot of venues, including uh, Tropics, mm-hmm. that do these live shows that you don't even hear about. The only reason I heard about it was because I went for the 50% off burger on <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they know how to market. Is thing, know, okay. <laughs> okay. And then I was like, yeah. I was like, who's singing, you know, cabaret back there? And I walked and I went through a curtain. There's a whole room 
with yes, honey, but it's tropics, and you're not allowed there unless you're over 80. So that's yeah, just that's why. Not, that's I not, love tropics, and they have great food. That's not true. I <laughs> saw th like three other people though. <laughs> <laughs> this place sounds so classy. I feel like I've already been banned from it, and it has. Me <laughs> 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 you already feel like you've done. Yeah, like I think there, my right? picture is already on the door for oh like. Do not let him no. in. <laughs> I hope they slap men. You know how they go like that, and they're like pew. <laughs> How's that go? That's how you pew. pew. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it's fancy. It's fancy. <laughs> Next, let's queer, <laughs> <laughs> let's queer up politics. Hypocrite GOP organizer allegedly pays 500K to man he fondled to drop assault charges. According to sources from CNN, American Conservative Union Chair Matt Schlapp paid $480,000 to Carlton Huffman, who accused him of sexual assault to drop the lawsuit. Huffman, a former staffer for Herschel Walker's campaign, claimed Schlapp assaulted him during a car ride while working. Initially, alleging groping and fondling, Huffman said Schlapp made unwanted advances at bars prior. Even though Huffman turned him down, Schlapp asked again, to ride. And at that point, Huffman said he couldn't. After informing a senior official from Walker's campaign about his discomfort with Schlapp, Huffman was advised not to drive him. He conveyed his unease to Schlapp via text, which Schlapp repeatedly urged him to discuss over the phone, even though Huffman declined. Huffman filed a lawsuit against both Schlapp and his wife Mercedes, alleging sexual assault and defamation, seeking $9 million in damages. However, now, He's dropped the lawsuit, saying, quote, the claims made in my lawsuit were the result of a complete misunderstanding, and I regret the lawsuit caused pain to the Schlapp family, end quote. CNN su sources suggest a $480,000 settlement was paid from an insurance policy, absolving the Schlapps and American Conservative Union of direct payment. I understand Wanting to go for your payday. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I would have done a lot more for 480. Uh, that was a little, he went too low. He, went, he should ask a lot more. But in the, but in the bigger picture, I just, I hate the message that this sends to people who are victims of sexual assault, wondering mm -hmm. whether or not they should come forward, whether, wondering whether or not people mm -hmm. will listen to them. Mm -hmm. And these kind of stories and actions just shove them right back in the closet. I wish this was an April Fool's joke. Mm -hmm. I, I really do, but so, it's not. So hold on. So you said schlap a lot, and I schlap. got very confused, uh, given that we went over the story before. So one person claims to be assaulted, then the driver, removed, the driver was assaulted. By the, schlap. Yes, right. the yeah. schlap is the official. Then mm -hmm. dropped it, but then had to pay for, for defamation, I guess? Oh, no. Well, he paid to shut him up. He paid no, to give him the, the, the offender paid off the victim to drop to the drop law. Okay, 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 that makes more sense. So he's yeah, like, yeah. so he's like counting his money. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood everything yeah. that happened in my case. Yeah, didn't you, you know? get my tone and, during yeah, the, like, you know, I completely And agree. we have to make sure to say that it was an alleged assault because we weren't alleged. there, right? So True. we really don't know, you know? So what is the going rate now for sexual assault these days? 500 <laughs> yeah. grand, is Why, that what it is? Yeah. He went too long. I'm it's getting assaulted the by long. the wrong yeah. people. <laughs> I am getting assaulted by the wrong people. Turns out it's just one big slap. What a slap in the face. It's better than selling my nudes for $300. That's for sure. You can get that? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yes, for the right price. Are we surprised again? Another conservative. Who's white the, man. Yeah, yeah. A white conservative, conservative white, white man. man. Okay? They're who's calling us rumors. Like, look at this guy. It's just it's, funny how justice has two totally like, different It's systems. always the same character. I've seen this story over and over again. And it's just, but you're right about that. It shouldn't be uh, trivialized, sexual assault, and anything like that. But, you know, it's just, I just, I just laugh at these individuals, these conservative individuals. This, mm -hmm. Yeah, the hypocrisy. Is like, no consequence. Oh, no, the, no, the, 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 yeah. no, and there is no, no consequence. The hypocrisy. Yeah. This, like, yeah. like Carvel said, this story happens over and mm -hmm. over. Yep. Somebody yeah. gets paid out, and then what? We forget about, about it. it. It's and never and talked and about and it and again, yeah. and then they go run for something else. And they do and it again. They put, and it didn't even mean he stopped doing it. No. Yeah, he, but yeah, we're the groomers, right? We're still the groomers. Yeah, and these are the, yeah, these are the monsters. Well, because it takes away the claim, right? Because just because you paid someone off doesn't, doesn't mean you did did it it means i want this to go away yeah so that you can't technically you can't bring it up again because you just don't know now no one and can talk about it because you signed it and yeah, right. yeah we can bring it up on queer news tonight yeah we are yeah. <laughs> oh we gotta say alleged no gag allegedly. order here allegedly alleged yes okay alleged. next we're gonna queer up entertainment outshine film festival triumphant return with gala opening night in miami south beach april 18th 
The opening night of the 41st Outshine LGBTQ Plus Film Festival for the Miami edition is on April 18th. The festival runs through April 28th. You can join the opening ceremony, which includes entertainment and a short film, followed by their opening night film, Turtles. After the movie, <laughs> there are free drinks, food, and more entertainment at the W Miami. Plus, all ticket holders get a free Uber ride to and from the ceremony. Turtles screens at Silver Spot Cinema and is directed by David Lambert. Following the opening night on April 19th are a series of amazing movies like Power Lessons of Tolerance, Chuck Chuck Baby, Riley, among others, and a documentary named 40 Years of Care. April 20th will be dedicated to exciting movies of different genres like The Shadow of the Sun, Nerud, a Latin spotlight, movies like All the Silence and Blue Lights, among other films screened throughout the 10-day festivals are What a Feeling, Listen Up, and the closing night movie called Marscapone, <laughs> The Rainbow Cake. For further details and tickets, visit OutshineFilm.com. I love that you're getting an Uber ticket. Yeah. This yeah. is perfect. Yeah. Get in and out of Miami Beach. Mm -hmm. No one has to worry about drinking and driving. Uh, and there is one other film that I saw is going to be here that I want to highlight. It's called uh, 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 Ch -ch -ch Mad About the Boy, okay. the Noel Coward story. Ooh. Okay. All right. So uh, I think I that's like, that. I think that's going to be pretty pretty cool. You know, I love that we have two editions, right? For those Fort Lauderdale people that don't get down to Miami because it's another world, right? Yeah. For me, I love to. I love film festivals. I love foreign films. I love especially films about our culture, about our community, right? So Outshine does it big, and they represent all the letters of our community, which I adore, right? So, and this time the edition is in Miami. This is the uh, the Miami edition, and then they go back to Fort Lauderdale in October, I believe. So a couple of the movies that I can't wait to see are. The Spanish films, uh, Luces Azules, is going to mm. be fantastic. Y Todo el Silencio is also going to be fabulous. Actually, me and Dino Mosquera, he is head of the steering committee that they watch all the all the movies and decide what goes to this film festival, are going to be on my show uh, Monday, next Monday morning, and you'll also see Jonathan Casañas on my show. Okay. So me and Dino are going to be talking in and out all Spanish movies, so make sure that you do that. And then I'll be able to speak to Jennifer Chris, who is also on the same board, and we'll be talking about all the women's films, okay? Which will be including queer women, trans women, lesbian women, and I'm super, and bisexual women. I'm super excited about that. Outshine Film really does make it a point to represent our community mm -hmm. to the fullest, they do. They do you know, job. and they yeah. do it and they do it in a yeah. fabulous way. Yeah. We need to really support. And yeah. for folks, folks who are not here in South Florida, right? They started this yes. back during COVID. You can stream a lot of these films online, outside at home, which yeah. I absolutely yeah. love. Yeah, I forgot. But yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah, because some of those movies you might want to be without a tire to watch, you know what I mean? I'm just saying. Yeah, and, I, and you're right about the representation <laughs> part. Like, uh, they, we host some of the, Gay Ocho hosts some of the Spanish mm -hmm. uh, movies, but I, I, you know, so I'm not a big movie buff guy, but you're just I have a fun guy. That was good. I was waiting for that. Thank you, you guys. Like, for that. Thank you guys. <laughs> up to that. No, I just love the Outshine Film Festival because. Um, they get to show a part of, of cinematography that we don't get to see, especially the general public. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't believe it. And I went on its, one of like my first dates with someone and I saw this movie 1985. Okay. And it was about a boy who had to tell his parents that he had, he had contracted HIV. And he came from a family that was very, 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 very religious. And his father could not deal. I'm not going to tell you how, what happens to that, but I cried Aww. for 20 minutes after the movie was over. Oh, my goodness. And, and Outshine F F uh, Film Festival changed my life because of that moment. And so I, every year I tell people to go and, and experience yeah. that moment because you don't get to feel that yeah. in the regular cinema. No, you don't. Like no. these are movies okay. that hit you and, you, and, no. and represent who you are and reflect your lifestyle. Completely, and, completely. And, and you're hit in the face with it. It was such a beautiful, in such a beautiful way. And for folks that maybe you don't like like long movies, they have movie shorts yeah. that I so enjoy. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of comedies. They know they also have documentaries. You know, they have a whole documentary about Lesbos, the lesbian island i can't wait to watch that you know like come yeah, on. yeah 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 outshinefilm.com for all the movie listings and you know go to the events they also have so many events for the spotlight film they always mm -hmm. try to booze you up and give you some food too which is always a lot of fun and miami does it big so make sure that you go check it out at outshinefilm.com next we are proud of our special partnership with sunshine cathedral the world's largest queer church right here in fort lauderdale supporting that partnership we're broadcasting from our permanent set here at sunshine cathedral at the happening out television studios we broadcast sunshine cathedral sunday international service at 10 30 a.m
finish tonight's queer news headlines with a segment we call LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up um, the U.S. view. Libs of the TikTok founder now officially an anti-LGBTQ extremist and a hate with wa watch list. The Sudden Poverty Law Center has listed the libs of TikTok founder as an anti-LGBT extremist, adding her to the their hate, uh, hate watch list. The account is known for posting anti-LGBT content and has been linked to bomb threats targeting U.S. schools. And invest an investigation by the Vice revealed that 11 schools featured on the libs of TikTok received bomb threats shortly after. Accused of spreading conspiracy theories and misinformation about LGBTQ minors, the account has been incited in a hate campaign against teachers and medical professionals. Allison Chapman, an LGBTQ plus legislative researcher, hailed from the Southern Poverty Law Center decision called the social media account action as a reign of terror. LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up South Florida and Florida. One magical week in Orlando adds amazing 24-hour LGBTQ plus parties with Cadabra late night, May 31st through June 3rd. Experience one magical weekend, Orlando's exhilarating lineup of 13 DJs and 10 sensational parties from May 30th to June 3rd. Cadabra all-night parties are a key reason why OMW is one of the world's largest LGBTQ plus party events. Cadabra doesn't begin until the early morning and goes all night. Kick off with the TBT Welcome Bash hosted by Darcel Stevens featuring DJ Twisted D. Dive into the Riptide Party at Walt Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park on May 31st with DJ Paolo. After hours, join the Cadabra Neon Fantasy with beats by DJ Deanne. On June 1st, the Red Buccaneer Party at Disney Springs House of Blues awaits. June 1st, Cadabra Locker Room event features DJ Nick Stressener. There is a Pride Ball on June 2nd featuring DJ Kid Madani. June 2nd also features the Cadabra After Hours Daddy event helmed by DJ Alex Lowe. Don't miss out on the ultimate celebration. LGBTQ plus one minute news, let's queer up Hotspots Magazine. New Hotspots Magazine tells you the most important events for this week, April 2nd through the 7th. New Hotspots Magazine is on stands and is full of exciting features of all the queer happenings in South Florida. Enjoyed Pride Skate at Extreme Action Park on April 4th and the Lexus International Gay Polo Tournament from April 4th to the 6th in Wellington. On the 5th, is the Pink Nail Society's Spring Luau at Georgie's Alibi's Monkey Bar and Madonna's The Celebration Tour at the Casea Center on April 6th and 7th. Oh, and April 9th. Alan Cummings' Uncut is on April 6th, and on the same day is Ramrod's Pig Dance with DJ Curtis Atchison. The magazine also shares all the details of Scandal Saloon's captivating show on April 7th. LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up the world view. Thailand overwhelmingly approves same-sex marriage. Asia takes note. Thailand has achieved a historic milestone as the lower house passed a bill recognizing same-sex marriage. Pending approval from the Senate and Royal Assent, expected by the year end, Thailand could become the first Southeast Asian nation to legalize same-sex unions. This move solidifies Thailand's status as a haven for LGBTQ plus couples in a region with limited acceptance. The legislation redefines marriage as a union between two individuals, granting equal rights to LGBTQ plus couples for tax benefits, property inheritance, and medical decision-making. Additionally, it permits same-sex company couples to adopt children, signifying a significant step towards equality and inclusion. Thailand has laws prohibiting discrimination based on gender identity and sexual orientation, making it one of Asia's most LGBTQ plus inclusive countries. That is today's news for the LGBTQ plus community on the world's first and only daily LGBTQ plus evening news show. If our community is important to you, share this news with your friends and family. Are you, like most of America, part of our very large television audience watching this live LGBTQ plus news broadcast right now on Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, or Amazon Fire TV? Queer News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ plus digital television show in the world that is out of the closet and into the headlines. We need your support. If our community is, is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. 
This is the only place in the world that tells these types of LGBTQ plus stories in motion and sound. That is the Passion of Hotspots magazine happening on Television Network and Queer News Tonight. I'm your anchor, Faye, Faye what? what? And Jesus. See, Jesus <laughs> loves the gays. See, I'm just saying. Kiss him. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for dying for our sins. Thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of the trans visibility. <laughs> and thank you for yeah, giving yeah, us trans yeah, visibility. Yeah, visibility. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That was very yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. On behalf of these LGBTQ plus reporters, the incredible anchors of Queer News Tonight, including Carvel, a striplet, Yay. Dr. Ty Hauser, Jonathan Casañas, and Mark Pettit. We'll see you daily at 8 p.m. And to our LGBTQ plus world, we wish you good night. Uh,